Basically, classic, Christian classic, but, but in the intro, I would like to really encourage you or to raise your belief also reading the Word of God, in the reading Word of God and in belief and on reliance in reliance to Christ. Two scriptures we will analyze today, the Epistle to Romans, and then we will also take a look First Samuel to chapter 7, where basically is shown our Christian life, our Christian way, also for those who are for a long time in Christ, but before that, let us, let us take a look in the Epistle of Romans, the chapter from the verse 17 to verse 18. So, Epistle to Romans, chapter 8, uh, verses 17 and 18. And if children then hear hears of God and join hears with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. It is also, I think that the, the, or reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And it is also not so like uh, worthy. We, we are all yelling, oh, it is very difficult for us uh, knowing these prayers which we are doing, but basically, you know, we can't, you know, we can't give anything to God such that, that, we, ha that we haven't, like, earned, you know, this salvation, that we could have earned this uh, kingdom of heaven, even though the world would be in, in, in the size of like the kingdom of heaven and you are leaving this world which, which is not worthy like but as we know 
that this, music. that this uh, world, this uh, fleshly world is small, but the kingdom of God is big. And when we are denying ourselves, when we are living some type of uh, unpleasant thing, some type of addiction, some type of temptation, and we are denying ourselves for these uh, not good things, then then it is a small part which you can give, as I can tell you. Because God really gives you this eternal life, even if you haven't done anything. But if your position of heart is uh, ready to follow Him, then you have to realize that you basically haven't left uh, something big. And it is fantastic, you know. If you are buying some products, then more or less, then they are then they, they then it uh, really substitutes this amount not like money you, you know you have to give a lot of money but, but this product can be small you know maybe if they are similar you know then then this product is the same with the amount of money which you were but at this moment what God asked from us it is the love it is not the marketing you know but God gives you for free and if you are just if you are just uh, getting like uh, nervous and and, and and saying some bad things then it is also written in the Bible about which is said about these people but we have to realize that what God is really asking from us it is just a small part it's just like a it is for God, for God you can answer with denying yourself and you are saying yes, yes, yes I love you my Lord and then you show your love and then this love is really scriptured you know, your belief is really really like signed with words, you know I was buying these sensors you know in Latvia in order to buy these but the centers of uh, back, you know, they buy from 70 to 130, you know, euros. It's a big amount of money, you know, and you are just analyzing it, how to do it. But I found, you know, where one place in Latvia where you can buy these sensors from 10 to 50 euros, I found one place in Latvia. And when you have a chance, you know, to buy these uh, sensors, of back, you know, backward sensors, it is, a, it is a big difference if you can buy it by 15 euros or more. Logically speaking, humanly speaking, you, you, those are small pieces of uh, plastic, you know, which, which were which really, which really act on like uh, these movements, you know, and then and it is a difference if you uh, pay like 15 euros in, uh, instead of uh, like 150 euros, you know. Yes, logically speaking, we we have salaries as we have, but we, we will buy with less price. And here it is the same. We have to realize if we are looking to these uh, eternal values which is asked from God, then automatically it is normally that God is not asking such amount like so that it wouldn't be like uh, impossible yes he asked like a minimum just leave and deny your all of your bad things your temptations and follow me and you will also get salary like a reward also in heaven and heaven for free because because you believe in the sacrifice of Christ. But if you want to go further, you if you do this little small thing, then you realize then it should be like that you are doing it with joy. That because you really value all these values here on earth and all these values in the kingdom of heaven and your life, you know, this minimum this small part which you have to leave, all these idol in your life and then compared to this kingdom of heaven if those are like contrast the contrast we also realize that's why i would like to encourage you and don't 
really don't really get sloppy, you know, you think that all these difficulties, all these problems, but if you are suffering together with Christ, if you want to walk this narrow way, why? Because God is asking you, if you want to follow me, deny yourself and take up the cross and follow me each and every day. If you are doing for Christ, then all these temptations will come, all these problems will come. Uh, proudness so that you wouldn't love the world, so that your proudness would be under. Because in the kingdom of heaven, nobody will go in with proudness, with, with, e with egoism with selfishness, you know, so these are these scriptures, Romans, the visual Romans chapter 8, 17, as, as we can see, yes, in the verse 17 and 18, in the verse 18, in, in the epistle to Romans chapter 8, these sufferings are nothing like, nothing, so, so in some way, this word, which is the word of God, the epistle to Romans, it should really encourage us so that we would look to a lot of things uh, more dif differently. If, if, you, if it seems for you that you have like uh, gotten rid of a lot of things, then this word says that it is nothing. Maybe you got rid of some type of entertainment from some type of worldly things in the world, some material things, or or like if you gain some material things not in a normal way or illegally, and so on and so forth. But you are doing it if you are denying yourself to these things. You are doing it for Christ. You will be rewarded. One thing is that you are saved. But the other thing is that you are walking further, that you are bringing forth these fruits, you know, that you are denying yourself. These are sufferings if you want to try to get rid of these uh, unpleasant things, you know. Just take a look at the addiction of alcohol. It is suffering. He has done it for all of his life, and then suddenly it isn't easy. It is a process. It is good that God is uh, really sorrowful to you and, and gracious to you. Yes, you, we can read it in the Bible as well. When Israel was walking, there were moments when they weren't uh, having any war, you know. In Jericho, they just killed them, that's it. And this uh, nation of Jericho was invaded, but God was also in... But sometimes we are reading the Old Testament. Sometimes they needed, you know, for in order to win some nation, they had to do something, you know. Sometimes we are praying and it happens, and sometimes it... We are dying. We are dying for these, you know, like this addiction to all these eight notes of sin, as you remember. It will be easier to understand it from what we are dying of. It is taking up the cross each and every day. And we will also take a look in the uh, first Samuel. And sometimes it would seem that these, work, these earthly things are so important for us or not. For us to gain something or to get something. Uh, maybe for many years you, you, you got so good with some things, but, but not now. You, you know what it means to really follow Him, but you just didn't leave anything big. What God is really encouraging us as well. What is this thing, what we will take to heaven, if we leave as God is speaking in our hearts in order to gain us Christ, then there is a right of this question, what will you take to heaven, because Jesus said to, to really gain this uh, wilderness in heaven, you know. First of all, it is uh, love. To, to God and then to the closest one, and it is belief. And, and I will also mention as well, you can also read it in the Epistle of Galatians, it will be taken into account in your account, uh, love. Righteousness. 
God-fearing attitude, peace, which is contrary to anger. When we are getting angry to conditions, or then you have this uh, peace of God. These are these virtues we will, which we will take to heaven. What of the goodness, kindness, you know, discipline, self-denial, braveness, madness, kindness. These, these are these fruits of spirit which we get when we leave. If we are God fearing, with God fearing at it, then these come automatically. This is love to the closest ones. When when you are like uh, connected with this world and this closest one, and he and he really is uh, like disturbing you, then the anger comes. But when you have when you are lying to Christ and when you are denying yourself, then then you 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 won't be so worried like you you will be trusting to God with all of your heart, and then you won't be worried. Yes, and you. You won't be greedy because you will be humble in front of God. You will be peaceful because you have a mighty God. We will, we can see this in context, you know, in contrast to like when you would be in the world. And when you are a servant of God, then it is a, then it is a, your duty to serve to your Lord. What is your Lord? All these, uh, these. Addictions, temptations, entertainment. What is your Lord? I have a question. What is your Lord? Yes, you are a believer. Yes, you believe in God. But in the everyday life, what is your Lord? Your thoughts to which, which are attacking to you all these uh, worldly thoughts, ideas, emotions, and senses, you know, or the word of God, or God, or He, or he is priority. Just think about it. If you are a servant of God, and when you are uh, confident and if you are saved, then what is your everyday life? What is your law in your everyday life? Material things, maybe some type of uh, temptations, maybe you are serving to your belly, maybe, maybe to adultery, maybe you are serving to greediness, to anger. To depression, loneliness, what is it? What is your Lord? Let us take a look at it in the first Samuel, the chapter 7. First Samuel chapter 7, I, I would say it is classic, this uh, chapter 7. It is about you and me. The Old Testament about you and me in a seen form. Not the New Testament, but it is this Old Testament, you know, this, this spiritual life is also shown in the Old Testament. Not only physically, physically a concrete, you know, example which happened with you, with a believer who, who has uh, made a strong decision not only to repent of your sins, but also to turn from your sins, who has made a decision to go further I don't have any secrets that, uh, that more or less there are Christians have, uh, have sat in these, you know, barracks, you know, a lot of have sit in the barracks, you know, and waited, or they are, they are staying in the childhood. Childhood, yes, we have childhood for all of us, but not only physically, but spiritually, yes. There are infants, there are youngsters, and then there are fathers. But a lot of, but sometimes when we are grown ups, you know, we are walking in a, like diapers. And we will take a look in here from the chapter 7, verse 2. Let us read it. And it came to pass while the ark abode in, in Kiria Jarim, Kiria Jarim, that the time was long. For it was 20 years, for some it is 25 years, for some 10 years. The, the, ark, of, the ark is the holy place in yourself, in the Old Testament as well. For, and all the house of Israel lamented after the Lord. 
the Israel, you know, the house of Israel who knew God. And you are like lamenting, you know, how could I really encounter God in the book of heaven? There are signs and wonders, and it is written that the kingdom of God will come with force. Maybe you are thinking about these signs and wonders. How can it be that it happens for a believer? And it is good there was this one leader, like a believer who believed for real, another level of be believing, and it was Samuel in the verse 30. He said, And Samuel spake unto all the house of Israel, saying, If ye do return unto the Lord with all your heart, then put away the strange God and Ashtoreth from among you, and, and prepare your hearts unto the Lord. Interesting. This narrow way, it is a classic, you know. You have been born again, then let us go. What, what, what to do when to encounter God more? Not only, not only once a year or once in a month. You are feeling that you are a child of God. You are, a, you are a Christian with experience and you are not encountering God at that level when you return yourself. Like when you were on fire, like, you know, when you had this fiery belief, it doesn't matter that you were, that you were walking in the diapers and you didn't deny your temptation. But then year by year is passing by and then you just feel that you are, that you are not uh, fiery, that you, you, you don't feel the presence of God physically. And what is it that? And Samuel said that, Put away the strange God and Ashtoreth from among you. How, how, for how long can you walk in the diapers? Just throw them out. And then what happens there? And I would like, first, I, first I would like that you would see it for yourself. This throwing out of the strange God, like you know, the idol. And prepare your heart on the Lord and serve him only and, and he and prepare your heart on the Lord and serve him only and he will deliver you out of the hermit. Then the children of Israel did put away Balim and Esther to serve the Lord only. So God says, just, says now it's time to throw all the diapers, but to throw all the old idols, all the temptations and addictions and throw them all. The verse three and four shows them. Let us go further. The verse 5. And all that prayer life happens. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mitzvah, and I will pray for you unto the Lord. And we are trying to try to pray God. We have let everything. What, what to do in the next? You are starting to pray. You have the starting to have relationship with God. Now the prayer life starts to happen. Verse 6 now. It is, I would say it is the central word, the fasting. They were fasting that day. And they gathered together the midst and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and fasted on the day and said there, We have sinned against the Lord. What does it mean? They started to have revision to your life. You're starting to pray, you're starting to have revision. And you are starting to realize, I don't want I repented of one thing, so in order to do, yes, I have, oh, yes, I threw out the idols, yes, I made it, this is not a sin, yes, I threw out all these idols and threw out the diapers, so I would like to now walk further, yes, I would like to deny myself in this field, but what will be the next thing, and you'll start to make revision. You start to judge yourself, as it is written, who judges yourself doesn't come in the judge. In that sense, that you won't be judged, like like uh, getting hell. You are starting, you are starting to make a revision in your life. You are, you are starting to make a revision. You are starting to look into your life. Remember, in the book, like like. Uh, uh, Genesis, you know, in the Noah, what happens in the fasting, 
what what should be what happened in the fasting in the fasting when you are fasting you have to make a revision of your life what have you done wrong that is the uh, meaning of like fasting you know that we see in all the five books of Moses and we also see it in the book of Jonah you know in a lot of places uh, the Christians were fasting you know also here in fasting total self-denial like uh, looking into your life uh, remember in the book of Jonah what, what did Nineveh do they not only repented but they were also fasting they were practicing fasting it is this thing that we are trying to judge ourselves and analyze and it happens in fasting it is just ideal version yes you could have some health problems yes then you would but but you could also eat less like in that sense but but you are having new decisions you know but you are denying yourself yes but you you have this uh, revision in your life and there's some but and jesus said if something uh, if there is a sin in your life, then cut it off, you know, you have to make a revision in your life, you have to make a revision in all of your spheres of life, it is a self-denial, it is a process, those are changes, how to live further on. Yes, you threw out these idols, but these idols will return, then Satan will step on you. Yes, then he says, okay, why should be fasting, why should you throw all these idols? We see it in further. In the verse 7, the spiritual life sees it that, that you are making a revision, that you are judging yourself. The spiritual world sees it. In the verse 7, what happened? And the Philistines, the spiritual world sees it. You have a relationship with God in here. And when the ch children have gathered, when they have made revisions, when they have made strong decisions, then, and when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together to Mitzvah, the Lord of the Philistines went up against Israel. And then, as you as a believer, if you have to live without some addiction of a royal life, you were, uh, you were um, relying on some temptations, you know, you were living in addiction, but now you have to leave it, and then there is this like a uh, way of uncertainty, you know, happens, then some type of uh, unbelief, so a believer appears this unbelief, whether I will do it, but yes, these lords of Philistines are here, what are these landlords? This is the things that Satan he, he encourages you like you and says to you, Oh, just the last time and then okay, just sing for today, just this uh, lost your flesh, you know, and that's it. Just walk for one more time and you you are yes, these lords are appearing and as soon as you as you make some strong decision and then Satan brings you these things. What what type of spell denial? This life is beautiful. Satan is uh, near and he will come at these thoughts. Yes, maybe he will tell you, oh, you won't get with it, you know, it is too difficult for you. And you are thinking to really rely on these laws. Or sometimes I also have encountered with that some type of temptation come and you are thinking, yes, it's just for one more time, then so tomorrow it will happen. And then, like, like at that time, God has done us for a lot of things at that short period of time and where we can see. I would like to show you in the verse 10, but this will be, we will go to this uh, verse 10 that God has prepared everything, you just have to do it. We will walk step by step, you know. And in this verse 7, and these landlords are here. So? And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together, the Lord of the Philistines went up against Israel. When the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the Satan will say, Oh, you won't be able to do it. And here, 
in the verse 8, when the decision has been made, you just realize, oh no, so, so that this Satan brings me forth the temptation to all these bad things, you make decision, no. No, sorry, I will serve the Lord. And it is right decision, you know, and in this type of moment, uh, a lot of people say, oh, yeah, I will just have a little, yes, I would like to eat, and eat out my refrigerator and then I will, like, like Satan, he tricks us in all type of sorts of ways. Why am I mentioning a lot of, like, a lot of times about eating, you know, because it is the first, not of sin, and the second, if you try, yes, but we have to fight with all these, not of sin. We, we are all falling, you know, if we, if we, you don't believe, then look in the mirror, this temptation, because I would like to also speak about the same with anger, you know, it is also one of the not of sin. I'm just mentioning it, and what happens in the world today? The strong decision, the continuation of action. Basically, in the world state, we will take a look at the verse eight and nine. You are being born again. You just uh, we we are showing this belief. And they were eight and nine. We are like really showing yeah, this, like belief. You know, and the children of Israel said to Samuel, "Please not to cry unto the Lord our God, for us that He will save us out of the hand of the Philistines." And then in the verse nine, there was this sacrifice. You know, I would like to read how is it in the Bible, which in other version. I would I wouldn't like to say originally because the Bible is one, but there are a lot of translations. In the verse nine is. And Samuel took a sucking lamb because it has been really taken out in the Latin Bible. Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel, and the Lord heard him. Herod believed. Together with nation, they were praying, and then with the, uh, you know, they were calling with mouth, you know, like when you are born again, like when you, when you show your belief, you know, also when you are being born again, not, not only when you are telling these little words, you know, you just you just were dedicated to serve for your Lord, but but, but this belief is when you have made decision to serve Lord. And your in and in your Christian life, your uh, elements when you have made strong decision to serve, you have also called it in belief. You know, and you're doing it in belief. And here in the, the verses eight and nine show that. And and in the verse nine. There was belief, a real belief. And we can also read also interesting verse. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines. And discomfited discom them, and they were smitten before Israel. They were so so afraid that they were in any warrior and what happened. And then Israel had to defeat and also in your life you make decision. You don't really realize that that is belief. When we when we are relying to God, when when we are fighting up against our addictions, our temptations, you know, some type of things, when we are walking, when we are praying God. And before these verses we, we had the judging, analyzing ourselves before that and then at the at the same time, we have to rely to God. We will do it. And here we see that God is acting together. At, at each time when you are denying yourself, your sins, addictions, temptations, then God is with working with you. Like, and we are saying in the first time, God did everything. And they were smitten before Israel. And this confidence them, and they were smitten before Israel. Israel was fighting. It doesn't mean that God really uh, gets rid of us from. But because logically speaking, that would be like that. Because God will do anything. No, God is working with you. You're fighting against this sin, you know, as it is written here. You and God cooperating. It is a real belief. 
living belief, not only words. As we saw it, as 20 years for Israel, nothing happened in the verse too, you know, for 20 years they were believers, but then, we, and then suddenly they realized, let us stop walk, walking in diapers and let us walk in attack. When, here, it, here is this moment, slowly, step by step, we, we are going to this promised land. They have really invaded this promised land. You are in this promised land inside of Christ, but so that Christ will be fully in you. Step by step it happens, each and every day it happens, not for one week or for one month, but so that we, so that we gain this promised land fully, you know. It happens slowly, step by step, as it's written in Hebrew as well, so that we will walk into this, this promised land. From what, from from what, from all of these temptations, from all of these bad things, your quality, your quality of life will change. You will also see physically, because we are the Christians of New Testament. We have these fights in spiritual realm, you know, because they will be seen also physically. Because because Jesus said that the signs and wonder will uh, follow you, and also the kingdom of God will come with force. It happens step by step. And, that, and no, don't forget that God gives you victory because sometimes it seems that you won this fight, but as we see it in this verse 10, that basically God gives you this victory. You just you just took a little like step, as I said in the intro. God gives this small thing for us, and it is. It is not good not to like serve God or not to listen to Him. You just have to deny yourself and you have to serve the Lord as God is asking. We can also read the, till the verse 17, slowly, step by step, and then the verses 16 and 17. Because Samuel was that one, he, he went from year to year in circuit of people. He judges Israel and all those. I am encouraging you make revisions in your life. Let us go further. Let us not stop in our Christianity and be blessed. Amen.